Millette Hall on the campus of Miami University. It's Mid-American Conference Men's Basketball. The Miami Red Hawks hosting the Ball State Cardinals. Good afternoon and welcome along with Jerry Pearson. I'm Vince Welch. Glad to have you with us this afternoon. Yeah, I know the records aren't very impressive. Both teams just two and five in the MAC. Yeah, I know it's cliche to say throw them out the window, but really when you talk about Ball State and Miami, the rivalry in itself is really worth focusing on. That's what we're going to focus on today. We'll talk about some of the, the pros and cons that these teams have fought through throughout the season, but what makes this rivalry so special? You played in it, you coached in it, you know it. I think two things, Vince. I think that's a natural rivalry just because of the geographical distances between the two teams and secondly you have a team like Miami who's been in the league forever at the, at the inception of the league and secondly Ball State came in the league several years later and so I think that because of the of the mileage and everything it just makes it a natural rivalry and so we're going to have that today. The Ball State Cardinals have uh, struggled the last few games because they've missed one of their key players Matt Kamenicki who has been out with a back injury we expect to see him for some time today but in his absence Bo Cal Calhoun has really stepped up and done a nice job. What's been the key to his uh, addition? I think the big key has been his confidence level. He's, he's really applied his uh, characteristics that makes him a good basketball player. He's physical. He can shoot the basketball, and he's just played with a great amount of confidence inside and outside. Has good leadership on the floor and, and uh, plays aggressive. Passes the ball extremely well. And his uh, stats, Vince, have just doubled in the last uh, last few games. And you see them there. They're, they're very, very good, and he needs to have another good game for the Cards today. Day. And for Miami, they go as their point guard goes. His name is Eric Washington. Why is he so good? Eric Washington is one of those guys that every coach likes to have on their team. He's a consummate point guard. He's a great passer. He's a very adequate shooter. Gets to the foul line a lot. The leading passer in the Mid-American Conference in terms of assists. Very good athlete. Very strong. You see his numbers there, and they're one of the best in the league. Miami is one of the best in the league here at Millette Hall. They are very good at home over the years. In fact, in the last 20 years, Ball State's won here just twice. Right. If the Cardinals are to get it done today, what are going to be the keys, Jerry? I think one big key is they're going to have to make this a half-court game. Uh, you know, it's going to be very, very important because Miami likes to really full-court press. And they have to stay out of foul trouble because uh, their, their depth has, not, has been limited, and so that's going to be a key thing. And in terms of the, of the Miami Red Hawks, a couple things they have to do is get that full-court pressure working and, and make Ball State get tired at the end of the game. And they have to play a little more consistent here at home. They haven't been able to finish games quite so well. Introductions taking place, and we'll give you the starting lineups for this afternoon's ball game, the Ball State Cardinals and the Miami Red Hawks. Ball State will get Matt Kamenicki in the starting five today. He has missed the previous two games because of injury, but he will be able to go today. How long he'll be able to go remains to be seen. So we'll, we'll keep our eye on Matt Kamenicki. Uh, regular four along with Kamenicki. Otherwise, Francis Kiapwe, Jamal Davis, Sean Sellers, and Franco House. And for the Miami Red Hawks, Jerry mentioned Eric Washington in the open. Terrific young player, his first year with the program after transferring. Will Sullivan, number three, keep an eye on him. He is an outstanding three-point shooter. And Giovanni, Giovanni McKnight, a terrific player as well, along with Logan McLean and Khalif Wright. The Miami Red Hawks 2-5 on the season, 7-13 overall, and Ball State 2-5 in the conference as well, 7-11 overall. Both these teams, Jerry, have had some struggles, but when you look at these, uh, the recent surges, they are Miami's lost four of the last five. They must be playing terrible. They've been right in it. James Whitford's Cardinals have lost five in a row, but they've been in all of those games as well. Well, that's right. That, uh, I think that the uh, the standings and the records of both these teams is very deceiving, Vince, and I think that you've hit it the nail on the head that both teams uh, are a lot better than that record. Here's a good look at John Cooper in his third season here at the helm of Miami. Came here from Tennessee State where he was a head coach there for three years. He's been an assistant in South Carolina and Oregon, Auburn, some good programs. But he's trying to get things turned around here at Miami just as James Whitford is trying to get things turned around in Muncie at Ball State. Well, I think Coach Cooper has gone bigger and that's helped his alignment as well. 98th meeting in this series between the two. The men wearing the whistles, Cronin, Sanzir, and Wilkins. Miami in white, Ball State in red. First possession of the game. 
And the Ball State starting out in their man-to-man, -man, which they usually play. Ball State, uh, Miami uh, likes to play a lot of different defenses, and Ball State will stick with man most of the way. Baseline jumper from right off the mark. Franco House pulls down the rebound, averages five boards a game. See a lot of different defensive looks from Miami. They'll play a 1-3-1, man-to-man, -man, matchup zone. House gets inside and muscles it in. Yeah, good job. Franco House has had success with that particular move, dribbling his way back and back in and uses his size to make, uh, make an easy basket. He's right again. Kamenicki guarding him and right. Tries to take it at him as Sullivan steps back and travels. I want to keep an eye on Sullivan. He can definitely shoot that three-pointer. Tops in the MAC at 48 percent. So yeah. one of the keys defensively for Ball State is to keep an eye on Will Sullivan. Yeah, that's what Gruckmeyer was saying before the game that they can't let him get loose, and he did right there. It's unusual for him to travel like that, but he did shuffle his feet, and uh, not a uh, you know kind of a turnover that uh, doesn't happen to Miami too often. Speaking of turnovers, right through the hands of Kiapwe. Yeah, Francis took his eye off the ball just briefly as uh, Jeremiah Davis threw him a nice pass and just lost uh, lost eye contact. Miami's done a nice job with the ball. They've had more assists than turnovers in four of their last five games. That gives you an indication they've taken good care of the basketball. But great offensive rebound. Still can't get it to go down as McKnight missed from point blank. Good, good competition on the boards by both teams. Three-pointer, Sean Sellers. Yeah, you don't want to give Sean Sellers that wide-open look, just, just like Will Sullivan. He's, uh, he's the best three-point shooter on the uh, Ball State team. Cardinals off to an early 5-0 lead. You know, you really, uh, you watch the stats of these two teams, and Miami really hasn't been a real, real good offensive teams in terms of offensive uh, percentages. So if Ball State can get this a half-court game, they should have some success. Shot clock under 10. Washington mishandles it. Chased down by McKnight. Got to do something with it quickly. Beats the buzzer, misses the shot. Kamenicki, team's leading rebounder, corrals it. You know, ex excellent defensive possession there for the Cardinals. Ball State has looked sharp here in the first two and a half minutes. Davis shoots the three off the mark. He was 0 for 7 from the floor at Akron on Tuesday night. Sellers looks, pops, nets another one. Pretty good start for the Cardinals here, Vince. Excellent. Good passing by the Cardinals at the half court. Another open look for Sean Sellers. Sean Sellers with a couple of three-pointers, and John Cooper's decided he wants to take a quick timeout to get the team's attention to make sure they, they guard Sean Sellers. I know they saw that in the game film. Doesn't that drive you crazy as a coach? You oh. talk about it, and then you go out and you don't do it. Yeah, exactly. And uh, just a couple turnovers and a couple missed shots. Easy down there. Ball State uh, really playing aggressive, and you see uh, the wide-open shot here. Good hustle here by uh, Jeremiah Davis to pick up the loose ball. A good open pass. Good shot fake there by Sellers, and got the defense off balance and that allowed him to shoot a wide open so uh, a good start here for the Cardinals going to maintain this kind of aggressiveness. Sean Sellers with 38 three-pointers this season leads Ball State shoots it at a 46 percent clip one of the top shooters in the Mid-American Conference certainly a terrific effort by the freshman as he's just called for the foul trying to guard Will Sullivan first foul on Sellers. <laughs> You know, both of these teams, Vince, are very young. Uh, Miami, Will Sullivan's the only senior that they have on their basketball team, so they're very young. And uh, only a couple seniors for the Cardinals as well. Calhoun into the ball game as Kamenicki goes to the bench. And there's an easy one for Washington. Nice flex cut offense by the Red Hawks that time and was able to get, uh, get a wide open layup. Davis takes it into the paint. Nice find. Calhoun draws a little contact, but can't get it down. And the rebound pulled away by Caleb Wright. Well, Calhoun made a real tough shot out of it. It wasn't good position. 
inside of the big fella McLean. 6'9", freshman from Winterville, North Carolina. Pretty good looking big kid. Nice play there, and you can't let the ball get that deep in the post. Turnover, Cardinals lead out for McKnight, and he is tripped up by Jeremiah Davis. Well, Davis is trying to catch up to get the foul, and he just happened to caught, catch him on the heel to trip him before he had a chance to get a real foul. So uh, good call here by the officials right there. Just a trip. Miami running this uh, flex offense, running a little continuity there to try to get some open play, and there you get the ball in there again. McLean was there, just couldn't get it in. Yeah, they were very lucky for, for the Cardinals there. Another good pass and nice offensive uh, possession for the Red Hawks just didn't pay off one with a basket. Kiapwe, three-pointer. Well, you give Kiapwe that much time, too. He can, he can shoot the three as well, and he gets on a hot streak, he can string him out. Ball State off to a great start here from beyond the arc. Three of four from three-point range. And Sellers is going to be called for a second foul. Timeout on the floor. Early stages of the first half. 15-29 to play at Millette Hall in Oxford. Ball State and Miami. Some hot shooting for the Ball State Cardinals. It's the Birds off to an early lead here over Miami. Francis Kiapwe knocking down one of three three-pointers for Ball State here in the first half. Yeah, pretty, pretty good uh, defense on him on that shot too. A lot better than I thought it was. And good, good pass out there by uh, Franco House. Inside, outside pass, which is very effective against good defense. Ball State made just six of 19 from three-point range in that loss at Akron on Tuesday. So for the Cardinals to come out and hit three of their first four, a good sign for James Whitford's bunch. Sean Sellers out with two fouls. Rocco Belcaster in for the first time today for Ball State. Cardinals stay in that man-to-man. -man. Chris Bryant into the ball game with the ball, handing it to Washington. Bryant getting his first action today. Also, LJ Livingston in the contest for the Red Hawks as well. Good defense from Kamenecki. Sure Xavier was. Turner pushing it, seeing his first court time today. Former starter, last year's MAC Freshman of the Year. Well, all those subs have really done a pretty good job at the Cardinals in uh, tough situations with uh, reduced uh, manpower. See how they do today. Kamenicki trying to back down Livingston, and Turner shoots the three. Ball State four of five from beyond the arc here in the first half. Well, that's their game. And again, good inside outside play by the Cardinals, as good as I've seen for a while. It's good for Xavier Turner to knock down his first shot, too. When he makes his first one, it gives him a confidence that makes a difference as McKnight draws the contact and will shoot a couple. Call foul on uh, Bo Calhoun. That's the first on Calhoun. And Giovanni McKnight will go to the free throw line and shoot a couple for Miami. This Miami team is uh, very, very quick. They like to get you off your balance a little bit defensively and drive to the basket, pull, pick up those fouls, and they get to the free throw line as well as anybody in the league. They shoot under 70% from the free throw line. They've had some troubles throughout the course of the season on particular games. Making the free throws will be key for both these teams here this afternoon. Ball State didn't shoot the free throw well at all the other night at Akron, made just five of 12. Jerry, when you're not a very good basketball team to begin with, you got to take advantage of making your free throws. You sure do. You have to make free throws and, and, and make your share of wide open shots, but those free throws are vital. Here comes that full court pressure. Yeah, you're exactly right. And uh, they're going to stay in it and make Miami have to work, see how well, a little half court press too. So then they fall back into a little standard man to man there, just to kind of a troublesome thing to see how well you handle it and keep you off rhythm just a little. Shot clock under 10. Davis working on McCormick. 
Belcaster got to shoot it quickly. Gets it off just in time and knocks down another three. Rocco Belcaster. Well, again, that's Ball State's game, and they used the clock to, to their advantage there. So get Miami a little bit out of sync here uh, offensively as well because they're shooting it so well. Miami's not playing with a lot of confidence right now. Ball State has made six of eight from the field, including five of six three-pointers. Got a nice job on the defensive end as well as McCormick puts up. The shot had his foot on the line, counted for two. Zach McCormick, the freshman from Cincinnati. Didn't get a whole lot of playing time, but uh, had Kamenicki on him and took advantage of uh, Kamenicki playing off a little. It'll be interesting, Jerry, to see how Miami attacks Matt Kamenicki, knowing that he's nowhere near 100% for that back injury. Well, he's, he's played all the minutes. You've got to keep that back warm, that's for sure. Boy, Davis, a lot of contact from Moore, but no call, and the ball is out of bounds. Cardinals will keep it. Moore was mugging Jeremiah Davis as he was trying to dribble that basketball to the basket as Franco House comes back in and Kamenicki will go back to the bench. I imagine they'll put a little heat pad on that back, keep it warm. Turner tries the three short this time, rebounded by Bryant. Cardinals with a nine-point lead. McCormick again. Back-to-back -back baskets from the freshman. Well, McCormick's already got more than his average, so you don't want him to get started, and Ball State's kind of left him alone. Turner misses another three. So after making his first, and we talked about the confidence that it gives him, it's giving him the confidence to shoot him. They just haven't gone in. Yeah, a little bit quick. I think you can always get that kind of three there, Vince. I think it's a little quick in the offense, not the kind of shot that Whitford wants him to take right away. You can see the three-point shooting there, which is outstanding. McCormick's had the hot hand. Another three, knocked down this time by Eustace, Jared Eustace, the sophomore from Australia. Yeah, and I remember one thing about Australian players, foreign players, they can stand and shoot it. He hurt Ball State last year. Indeed, he had 13 points in 15 minutes against the Cards last year, and here's more for an easy deuce. And this game has tightened up in a hurry. Well, not a, not a very good pass there by uh, Xavier Turner. Kind of a lazy pass. You'll see it right here. I'm not sure who he was passing it to. But he and Bo worked together right there. The defense got an easy layup, and there you see it there by Willie Moore. Well, after Ball State enjoyed an 11-point lead at 17-6, Miami has run off nine straight points. Well, they got some wide open sh shots there in the half court and then uh, some lazy passing there by Ball State and enabled Miami to get their run. Well, how quickly it can turn, Jerry. And you've seen it as a coach. You get that momentum going, and that's why every possession matters. You miss a shot, you make a turnover. Next thing you know, the other team's got a little momentum, and they've run off nine straight. That's right. Their confidence level's picked up, and it seems like when subs came in the game, it kind of turned a little bit for the Red Hawks. Cardinals with Davis, House, Kiapwe, Kamenicki, and Belcaster in the game. A big hop step from Davis. Fans wanted a foul, or a travel, I should say. Didn't get it. And House shoots the three, missed it. Rocco Belcaster rebounds. Davis will fire, misses. Well, Davis is one for his last 16 from the field. Got it, three-pointer. That's Willie Moore, and it's a Miami lead. Well, Ball State hasn't been as efficient down here at the offensive end and taking a lot, really some quick shots. Belcaster banks it in, and he even had to smile about that one. Well, it's a three-point shooting contest here now the last two or three minutes. Belcaster with a couple of three-pointers, and now McCormick rises, misses, and Kamenicki clears. You got a kick out of Belcaster after making yeah. that one, banking it in, and he just turned around and smiled. smiled. Franco House 
Trying to get inside. Well done. Draw some contact. No foul. Wanted it. Didn't get it. Three from Eustace. Misses. Yeah, a little quick there by Eustace as well. The defense coming out on him. So both these teams now have kind of hit a law, I think, a little bit, Vince, on their half-court offense. Both teams a little bit out of sync, especially Ball State. They're not screening as well, not getting some, as open looks as they got the first several minutes. Kamenicki trying to work on Livingston. Good defense from Bryant. Boy, they are real long right now on the floor of Miami. They're real long and quick, and they got some good shooters in there as well. Son Scheller's ready to check back in, even with two fouls. You got to get him in there and get some scoring. Well, you've got Livingston at 6'10, Bryant at 6'8, Eustace 6'7. Shot is short, missed by Moore. Belcaster rebounds. Davis thought about it, now shoots the 15 footer, can't get it to go down. Boy, he just cannot buy one. As they're not going up, looks to me like he's just real tentative, Vince. He's shooting about a half set and a half jump shot, really going up and really, really going off his feet and shooting it properly. Jerry, when you've made one of your last 17, would you like to see a guy like Davis maybe try to get it to the basket more often as compared to settling for the jumper? Yeah, I would agree. Maybe get some layups. Foul on Davis. Eustace will go to the free throw line and shoot a couple. 8.35 to play in the first half. Boy, it's been a quick one, and it's been well played and well shot. Ball State by two. For the big job or the do-it-yourself home improvement, a rental service company in Muncie can help with tool rental for any size job. Steel chainsaws, trimmers, blowers, sales and service. Find it all at a rental service company. Ball State still clinging to that two-point lead after Miami briefly went ahead 18-17 from the strength of that 12-0 run. Well, one of the things I know Coach Whitford wants to get done out of his offense is to have a good balance between inside play and outside play. Right now, Miami has six points in the paint. Ball State, two points in the paint. Need to do a little bit better of getting the ball down in the red area, score some easy baskets. <laughs> State to replace Franco. Calhoun comes back in for Franco House. Eustace will shoot the second free throw. Sixty percent shooter on the season. Has four points today. Makes that free throw, goes to the bench. Xavier Turner back on for the Cardinals. Made his first three-pointer, then missed a couple and committed a turnover and went to the bench. Trapping the ball, well played. Nice pass, and Sellers makes it and count it. Good look from Kamenicki and a terrific left-hand finish from Sean Sellers. Well, what was impressive there, Vince, is Miami came out of that timeout and ran a lot of just traps at the half court. Ball State was ready for it. Good pass into Kamenicki, and he made an unbelievable pass down low to Sean Sellers, who, who made a great basket as well. Sellers, a terrific free throw shooter, best on the team for Ball State at 85%. Sellers already with nine, a couple of three-pointers, and a three-point play the conventional way. He'll get a tough job guarding Will Sullivan. He just don't want to pick up his third foul. Right. Spins to the lane. Can't get it. Good offensive rebound by McLean. Fresh 35 for Miami. Sullivan working on Sellers. McLean just inside the three point line. 6'9", freshman, he's got a nice touch in and around the basket and also from 15. Yes, he does, and they've played him a lot more lately and have played better as a result of a big lineup. He is a good-looking freshman. Kiapwe, three-pointer. Francis Kiapwe, his second three-pointer. I'll tell you what, the Cardinals love these rims. They've hardly hit the rim, Jerry. It's just straight to the net. Nice play inside by McLean. 
Yeah, he just blocked uh, Xavier Turner right out of the play and was able to catch it and use the bank. Bad pass that time by Kiapwe, and now the numbers well done. Three on one. McLean gets another one. Well, I tell you, I like that big kid. He had he didn't hasn't played till lately, but playing with a lot of confidence. And he sure he sure saw that pass that Ball State was trying to play, and he's the one that was responsible for that layup. You referred to it earlier, Jerry, that uh, John Cooper's Miami team, they played small ball at the beginning of the season, and then they, of late, have gone to a bigger lineup, and it's been more effective on both ends of the floor, offensively and defensively. Well, it has, and we're seeing, it, we're seeing that right now. Washington loses the handle on it, out of, out of bounds. Ball State will get it. Time out on the floor with 6.15 to play in the first half. Ball State and Miami going end to end. Red Hawks and Cardinals, it's a one point game. Both teams shooting it well here in the first half. Ball State and Miami each at 50% from the floor. The difference, well, he's been the three point line. Ball State seven of 12 from beyond the arc. Miami, two of three. It's been a tight one. Ball State led by as many as 11, and then Miami ran off 12 straight. And since then, it has been back and forth. I think the other uh, key for uh, Ball State here so far in the first half is they've done a nice job of controlling uh, Eric Washington. He hasn't been too much of a factor uh, in the Miami attack here so far the first half. Yeah, Washington guarding Xavier Turner as pick and roll for the Cardinals. Sellers working the baseline. Calhoun getting it in as he works on right. And there's a whistle and a foul. It's going against Miami, and that'll be on Caleb Wright. Ball State did a little bit better job the last couple minutes in moving their, uh, moving each, each player moving, get to open spots, get some Miami defense to get some open looks. LJ Livingston back in the game for Miami. 6'10 junior from Maryland. Well, I know their record's not very impressive, but I'm impressed with the talent and the size of this Miami team as Xavier Turner's called for another turnover, traveling. Vince, it's amazing. It seems like every team in the conference that Ball State has played has just got unbelievable size. They've, they've really done a good job of getting some good outstanding postman, some long looking forwards. And uh, these young guys here from, from Miami are an impressive looking group. Sullivan just lost the handle on it. He wanted a foul. He thought Sellers nicked his arm, but no call. Cardinals will get it back. Well, and I know James Whitford and his staff have been combing the uh, the Midwest and beyond, looking for some of those players yes, for their are. own team. Yep, they got a couple couple uh, big, big guys coming in. Uh, Next year, Calhoun with a three pointer. Bo Calhoun doesn't shoot many of them, but he's been very confident in shooting it as of late. Big basket for Calhoun and the Cardinals. Drive to the bucket for McKnight. Yeah, not good, not very good communication. Ball State half court man to man defense on that trip and good attack there by the Red Hawks. Sellers hounded by Sullivan. Turner shoots the three, missed it. Calhoun offensive rebound. Great job by Bo Calhoun to go up and get it. That's what Bo Calhoun has been done, doing a lot better job of, and that's why he's the offensive uh, look of the game here. Franco House working the paint. Second bucket for Franco. Outstanding sophomore from Elkhart. Really done a nice job this season. More has been expected of him, and he has delivered more. And McKnight draws the foul from Kiapwe. Yeah, he got more, got Kiapwe out, out of his stance there and was able to get past him on the dribble. And Kiapwe had to use his hands. McKnight must be taking some theater classes as well. Yeah. <laughs> taking the most of those electives here at Miami. You had a couple of those, didn't you, Jerry, along with the basket weaving and uh, 
checkers uh, during your time here I, at Miami? I, I really, no, I really don't recall having any of those classes. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little different back then, I think. <laughs> well, for those that don't know, Jerry was a uh, terrific player, a Hall of Fame player here at Miami and coach as well. And a great career here for the what were back then the Miami Redskins. Well, it was a great place to live. Vince had a good uh, good opportunities, but it was a wonderful place to uh, to raise a family. Believe me. Well, Miami really doing a nice job on the glass. Yeah, they really are, and that's Will McLean. The freshman kids really done really done outstanding. McCormick had to let it fly as the shot clock was winding down, and the Cardinals had a nice defensive stand. Eventually, under three and a half to play here in the first half. A little pick and roll there with House and Davis. Now Belcaster has it. Rocco Belcaster has given James Whitford some good minutes well, he here today. He's yeah, knocked down a couple of three-pointers. He really has, Vince. He's a good shooter. And Turner again. No conscience. He missed a few. Oh, keep firing him. That's keep what firing. shooters do, right? That's exactly right. That was another NBA three by Xavier Turner. Came at a good time for the Cardinals. Turner's got a couple of threes. Ball State nine of 15 from three-point range. Shooting better than 50% from the floor here today. Well, got the shortest guy and the tallest guy on the floor guarding each other right there. Offensive foul. Great job by Xavier Turner sure to draw the contact from McLean. Oh, it sure was. Xavier Turner was in a, in a real dilemma there. Here you see it. Small versus big. And freshman, a rookie freshman big man mistake right there. <laughs> Well done by Xavier Turner to draw that charge to go along with a couple of long range bombs from the sophomore and Ball State leads by seven. The Ball State Cardinals have shot the lights out here in the first half, but Miami has hung around by some outstanding play by players like this young guy, the freshman Logan McLean with eight points. Well, good looking player. He really can shoot it well to 16, 17 feet. Got nice left handed uh, moves down inside. And uh, he's been a real strength for the ball for the uh, Miami offense here in the last uh, three or four basketball games for him. See him get a steal there and be the first guy down the floor to get a layup. Miami out of the timeout with some full court pressure. Good job, good patience by the Cardinals. Davis drives it in, some contact, gets. The ball down to Kamenicki who loses it, but the Cardinals will keep it. Well, everybody's playing off of Kamenicki, and he's been open down in there for some easy passes. Ball State hadn't been able to find him. Tried to there, but got knocked loose. Shot clock at 10. Belcaster already with a couple of three-pointers. Can't get that one down, but Kamenicki chases it down and then drags the pivot foot. Called for a traveling. Well, good effort by Kamenicki to keep it alive. Good job by the Cardinals. They've been able to uh, keep out of foul trouble with the exception of Sellers, and so been able to play everybody. Nobody seems to be all that tired right now. Cardinals have gotten some good minutes from Kamenicki. Didn't know what they were going to get from him. Missed the last couple of games with that back injury. Did not practice Thursday or uh, got a little bit of time in on Thursday. Didn't practice at all on Friday. Franco House finds Kamenicki, draws the foul, and he'll go to the free throw line. He's upset with himself that that wasn't an and one. Yeah, exactly. But a great pass down in there by Franco House. Good passing by the Cardinals to get it down inside. Super look. He was worried most about drawing the contact and yep. didn't get it finished. Yep, kind of lost concentration. Come on, Matt. Free throws, not the strength of Kamenicki's game, just 51%. Yeah, you just hope, I just want Matt to make one out of two. That one was right on line, just short. Better looking shot there. Good job, Matt. That's what you expect from him, and he came through. You know, it's amazing that Kamenicki 
his free throws, he's not a good free throw shooter, as we noted, but they're rarely way off the mark. They're usually just short yep. off the front of the rim. Really improved even at 50%, much improved over previous years. Shot clock at 10, and now Washington shoots the three. Eric Washington. Again, that's uh, about as good offensive possession as Miami's had so far in the first half. Good patience. Just the second basket for Miami's leading score. James Whitford says that he believes Eric Washington is the best point guard in the Mid-American Conference. That's really saying something. We haven't seen yeah. it yet from Washington, but we got a long way to go today. Yeah, that's a pretty strong statement because there's been there's some good ones in the league. Shot clock under five. Rocco Belcaster's got to do something with it. Finds Kamenicki. Hits the three-pointer. Can you believe that? Matt Kamenicki hitting a three-pointer. <laughs> Unbelievable. Good find for Belcaster and the Cardinals in the final seconds of the first half. And they commit a foul, and with four left to go, four ticks left to go, Washington will go to the free throw line and shoot the one and one. Well, I, uh, I tell you, Washington put a heck of a move on Xavier Turner there, and left Turner just flat footed, caused him to foul. Wasn't a good defensive uh, spot for Turner. Jerry, it's amazing that Turner. This will be his 98th free throw this season. 98. And to put that in perspective, Ball State's player with the most free throws is Sean Sellers with 62. I mean, that's yeah. how often Washington gets to the free throw line. And with 1.6, well, Miami's going to have one more opportunity. And he does that because of strength and because of quickness. He gets in there and gets his body into you. Cardinal's going to go a little defensive look here. Hopefully Sellers doesn't pick up his third with 1.6 left. He's going to guard the inbounds. Just want, uh, you want to give uh, Miami a little momentum here if he could run this out the half and stop him. Right into Bryant, and he can't get it down. Boy, well executed by Miami, but they could not finish it. And the Cardinals leave the court here at the end of the first half, pleased with the way they have played. James Whitford's got to be happy with the way his club has shot the ball for sure. Ball State at 54% from the floor, including 10 three-pointers. The Ball State Cardinals with an eight-point lead on the road at halftime against Miami. Well, good rivalry, the Ball State Cardinals and the Miami Red Hawks. This is the 98th meeting between the two here at uh, Millette Hall in Oxford, Ohio. It's been a long time since Ball State has won here. In fact, the Cardinals, as we mentioned, have won just twice here in the last 20 years here yep. in Oxford. Off to a good start with an eight-point lead here at halftime. If you're Miami coach John Cooper, my guess is he's talking about guarding the three-point line, right? The Cardinals made ten three-pointers in the first half. Well, yeah, Vince, he's, he's talking about guarding the three-point line, and yet uh, James Whitford's saying, hey, we got to get the ball down in the paint a little bit. Our outside game is working extremely well. It's going to be hard to keep that up in the second half. So hopefully they can get some easy baskets. But uh, Coop's got to get his man-to-man uh, -man defense out on the shooters a little bit quicker and then uh, have a little bit better consistency down on the offensive flow. Well, and how does Ball State get the ball down and have a little more offensive effectiveness uh, in the paint? Well, I think good shot faking, and, and I think that uh, they've, they've got the ball down in there. But, ball, uh, uh, again, uh, Miami's done a good job of doubling up. Kick it back out and then back in because I look for the defense to be a little bit different for uh, for Miami in the second half on the shooters. We talked in the open about the status of Matt Kamenicki. He's missed the last couple of games with a back injury. Played a pretty fair amount of minutes in that first half. What was your impression of what he gave James Whitford? Well, I was very impressed with Matt. I thought he did a nice job in there keeping his back warm. I think that's really going to be important. So he got as much out of him as I would expect him to get out, out of him. He's going to be tired in the second half, I'm sure. But uh, well, they, they really need his presence in there and I think it's helped them in terms of fatigue and I think that at the last 10 minutes of the game that's going to be a factor. Yeah interesting to see how he plays if he can play in the second half. It's been an entertaining first half of action and the uh, entertainment continues. The old unicycle. 38-30 Ball State on top of Miami at the break.
Ball State Cardinals lead Miami by eight here at halftime and a second half just ahead. Coaches often talk about the culture, particularly when you're a new staff. James Woodford just his second year at the uh, head coach position of the Ball State Cardinals. And recently he spoke with Joel Godet about uh, one of those team bonding experiences. A week ago, uh, there's no classes on Monday. It's Martin Luther King Day. Mm -hmm. And uh, you said the guys said to the guys you had a minute film at, for film at 1 o'clock and you had practice after that and said, guys, you're mine until 7. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't know why, but uh, practice ended and you took them to the movie theater. Uh, the importance of being able to, to incorporate the, the non-basketball side of, of the program is, is a pretty big aspect. It is. You know, it was Martin Luther King Day, so what I did is I surprised the team. They didn't have school, so we surprised the team. We practiced early, and we took them to see Selma. And uh, we did because I had went to watch the movie with my own family. And uh, as I was watching it, I thought, you know, what a, great, what a great educational opportunity of a true moment in history and an important one. And, um, and, you know, you can't ever forget our guys are 18, 19, 20, and it's about developing not just on the court but off the court as people too, dynamics for the team. So it was a, it was a great movie and it was, I thought, a, a good event for our guys to go see. How'd they respond? Are they good? They all really liked it, and uh, you know I think they appreciated doing something off the court. And I think that they 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 need to see from me that that uh, that we care that they develop in a lot of ways, you know, m more ways than just their jump shot and their ball handling. And, uh, and you know, also the thing about basketball, it's a very diverse sport, and uh, you know we we come from a lot of different backgrounds, and it's I think it's something that's important. Selma was a great movie for us to see and tells a story that I think is. Um, a long way away removed, and yet not that removed at times. As I said, do you feel like guy it, it hit guys in a certain way, and, and they were able to take something away from it? No question. You know, some guys more than others, and, and uh, some guys it would have been very foreign to, some guys it was very familiar to, but no question it uh, hit them. And the ones that I talked about it, it was uh, it was interesting to see their perspectives. It's very interesting to hear James Whitford talk about, you know, it's their responsibility to develop these guys beyond more than their, their ball handling and their shooting. I think it's a great comment and, and uh, one of the reasons I think Ball State's fortunate to have James Whitford as their head coach. He's doing it the right way. Why is it so important from a coaching and a coaching staff perspective to have those kind of team bonding uh, type events away from the basketball court? Well, Vince, one of the things that the fans should appreciate by James Whitford and his staff is they are trying to develop that kind of culture culture within the team. You learn to appreciate history. You learn to appreciate what the game of basketball has done, but also what community effort is, what relationships are, and that's what that movie is all about. Very important part of it. And it, when you can develop that within your team, then it's just transformed out in the community. It helps with recruiting. It helps in the high schools to know that you have a guy that's leading this basketball team and a staff that appreciates that, and it's a lot more than just the wins and the losses in a program. Yeah, I think uh, it's interesting James Whitford told me earlier this week we need our culture to be ironclad yeah. and uh, that was an example of it you know, many examples from coach Whitford and his staff the Ball State fans like what they see so far Cardinals by eight second half is next with some hot shooting from the Ball State Cardinals Cardinals up 11 at one point in the first half, and then it's an eight-point advantage as we get ready for second half play. Good look at Sean Sellers, 34, the freshman from Greensburg. He leads Ball State with nine points. Well, excellent interior passing right there. A great pass and a good three-point play there by Sellers. Good head, should shot bank again by number 34. Hit nothing but net. Hit that two or three times in the first half. Sellers, three of three from the floor for those nine points. Logan McLean, the leading scorer for Miami. Done a good job there, the left-hander shooting a jump shot. Two of them there on the, the Ball State defense. Good looking lefty. 6'9", young man that uh, has played really well for the uh, Red Hawks here lately. And it's interesting, Sellers is a freshman. McLean is a freshman. Those players that uh, we're going to be talking about for years yes, to come you for bet. Ball State and Miami. Look at the numbers here as we look at those first half statistics. 10 of 17 from beyond three-point range. Four other games, five other games. The Cardinals have been double figures in three-pointers. They're double figures in the first half. Well, it's just excellent. It's a good passing, a good inside-outside play, and they're getting the defense uh, off balance, and that's what you have to do against this Miami 
uh, continuous defense, pressure defense as they like to play. Good job on rebounding, excellent job. Uh, probably the worst thing they did was points in the paint. Not too many turnovers in the first half, so well done by the Cardinals. Coach Whitford's hoping they can get the start in the second half the same way as the first started. You know, James Whitford's been, when I talked to him yesterday about the, the losing streak, uh, they had won four in a row, and then on the heels of that four in a row, they lost that double over overtime heartbreaker at Western Michigan by two points, and then fell four more times in a row. So on the heels of a four-game winning streak, they have lost five in a row. And I was curious about how the team has handled that because it's a relatively young group. But he said they've really been strong of mind, and that's what he's been most pleased about. They've uh, had the right attitude. The effort has stayed consistent. They've had some bumps in the road here and there. But uh, the losing streak doesn't tell the whole story. And the team's going to lose some games at this stage with so many young players and new players. But that effort and the attitude is what you want to see day in day out well exactly and uh, the thing that's hurt them is that physically they've just gotten wore out mentally they're still sharp but physically they're playing so many minutes and you have some guys because of injuries because of some Afri Afri uh, academic difficulties they've had guys play out of position a little bit today they've got pretty much full strength and they're starting to show that kind of effort here in this game ball state starts the second half with jamal davis Franco House, Francis Kiapwe, Matt Kamenicki, and Sean Sellers, the original starting five. Jeremiah Davis, I should say. It's where they want to get the ball, down inside there. That opens up an awful lot of things. Kamenicki leans in and scores on Moore. Yeah, great job there by, by Kamenicki, and that's the kind of play that he's particularly good at. And, uh, boy. Ball State getting, getting some effort here from Matt today. Kamenicki now with six. Whistle on a foul away from the basketball is going against Jeremiah Davis. Third foul on Davis. Miami, by the way, starts the second half with Giovanni McKnight, Will Sullivan. Logan McLean, Caleb Wright, and Eric Washington, also their starting five originally. Sullivan threw it to Wright, and Wright was on his way to the basket. Turnover Miami. Yep, Wright threw it, and then went to the basket, and Will thought he was going to step back. You know what's amazing, uh, Vince, is uh, Ball State has had, held uh, one of Miami's leading scorers, Will Sullivan, to zero so far. So that's been a real big asset for the Cardinals. It's amazing. Sullivan hasn't even attempted a shot. Nope. And there is Sullivan with the foul, a little too aggressive defensively on Sean Sellers. Well, you want to keep, uh, you know, like you said, Vince, Miami gets to the free throw line as well as anybody and a pretty, pretty good shooting team from there. We keep them off the line. Early stages, second half, played just over a minute. Ball State with a 10-point lead, led by as many as 11 in the first half. Little matchup zone there by, by Miami on this trip. Didn't see that matchup zone in the first half. They'll play the matchup. They'll play yep. the 1-3-1. Haven't seen much of that either. Sellers spots for three. Hits it again. Sean Sellers with the three-pointer. Three of three from beyond the arc today for the freshman. Another great start for the Cardinals here in the second half. Just a super job uh, taking Davis out of the game because of three fouls with Xavier Turner coming in. But good job by the Cardinals running a little uh, little offense there against that matchup zone. Got Sean Sellers, a wide open jumper. Sellers with a dozen right at his season average. Got that Turner and Washington matchup at the point guard spot going to be fun to watch as the Red Hawks turn it over again as Caleb Wright couldn't get the handle on it. Here comes that full court pressure from Miami. Well, Ball State hasn't really turned it over because of the pressure. He's got to be careful. Washington knocked it out. Cardinals will keep it. Again, I think Ball State again, one of the keys as we talked about before the game started is getting this game in a half court game and Ball State's been successful at it thus far. Franco House called for the illegal screen. 
Well, if you if you leave that screen and roll just a little too quick and don't let the defense get by you, it's going to be called a foul. That's really a point of emphasis this year on the official. And even though Franco set the screen, you get you have to give him credit for that. Just left a little too early. Ball State's biggest lead of the game at 13. Miami trying to cut into it. A couple of turnovers for the Red Hawks here to start the second half. There's McLean shooting the three, hits it. He's got 11. Again, they ran a nice little play for McLean that time. Got the seven footer, a six nine guy out there on the point. Turner off the dribble and now Franco House. Kamenicki calling for it, doesn't get it. Shot clock under 10. Kamenicki now trying to work. Leans and there's a foul called on Caleb Wright. And Jerry, are you surprised Kamenicki's been as effective as he's been? He's got six points. He's done a nice job on the glass. I'm very surprised, Vince. I mean, he's his back. Uh, I'm sure he's probably in some pain, but he's playing through it really well. But I think he's moving pretty effectively like he hadn't had much time off. Good looking free throw there. Excellent job. So, yeah, anything that Matt get has been a bonus. I think that's, I really think as much as anything from a psychological standpoint, mentally, I think this has helped the Cardinals today to have him back in the lineup. And James Whitford talks about how much Kamenicki gives to the team from a defensive presence on the interior. He's really done a nice job offensively today as well with eight points. Go along with four rebounds and three assists. Yep, they just subbed in for him. He needs a, needs a little rest. That's good. I don't expect him to sit out too long. Inside pass to McLean. Miami's just been a little out of sync offensively today. Credit the Cardinals' defense with that disruption. That's right. They've been very aggressive on it. Kept their shooters under control. Shot clock winding down now. You watch for Washington on the pick and roll. Washington leans in on Sellers, gets the contact. Sean thought he had his hands straight up in the air. We've seen a lot more contact not get called today, but there was definitely a bump there. Watch it. Yeah, he kind of got his body into him, and Sean's got to be a little smarter than that, especially when he has picking up his third foul, because you can't be sitting over there on the bench. Ball State in a little bit of foul trouble now as uh, Jeremiah Davis is over with three. Sean Sellers has three. Well, you just don't want to give a guy like Eric Washington uh, the opportunity to get on runs where he runs uh, six, eight, ten points himself together because they've held him under control fairly well so far. And uh, got to keep, keep going like that. Cardinals get a break with him missing one of those two. He's better than 80% from the free throw line. Stolen away from Kiapwe. Lead on the break. Washington with the finish, just as you said, Jerry. Just got to settle down here and not. Over and back as Belcaster stepped over the 10 second line. So again, they want to get you, they want to get speed you up, and that's what they've done here in the last few seconds. Ball State's done a good job of handling that until just here the last two possessions. This would be a big stop for the Cardinals here if they could kind of thwart that momentum that Miami has That's right. generated. And there's a traveling violation called on Willie Moore, the junior from Cincinnati. Well, up and down we go here in the early stages of the second half. It's been a good four plus minutes. Ball State leads by nine over Miami. One of the keys to Ball State's nine point lead is the play of freshman Sean Sellers. Four of four from the field, three of three from beyond the three point line. Sellers has not missed. Even one of one from the free throw line. 12 points for Sean Sellers here this afternoon, leading the way for Ball State, the only Cardinals player in double figures. 
Well, let's see how uh, how the Cardinals handle the full court pressure here now this timeout. A little shaky here the last time down. Against this Miami pressure, Cardinals with Turner, House, Belcaster, Kiapwe, and Calhoun on the court. And that ball landed on the sideline. Now, Belcaster got tripped to the floor and no call was made. And that's why the ball ended up going out of bounds. Rocco's asking, well, you think I fell on my own? I don't think the ball hit the line either. I think it was well inside the line too, Vince. On the dribble drive is Moore. And Miami continues to cut into that Ball State advantage. Their defensive pressure is just picking the pace just a little bit. And James Whitford wants a timeout to talk about how the Cardinals are going to attack it. Well, they got to get the ball up the sideline, middle and then uh, opposite, I think. Vince, they keep reversing the basketball. Of course, again, Miami's done a good job of taking those passes away. A little quicker passing. And uh, I think James is still complaining to the official about the last play. That was really, really a, not a good call. Gives us an opportunity to remind you about a rental service. And uh, of course, anytime you're looking for a little home improvement, a do-it-yourself job, a rental service company in Muncie can help you with tool rental for any size job. Steel chainsaws, trimmers, blowers, sales and service. Get it all at a rental service company. Nice call. Hey there with us back to us there in the uh, Navy Blazers. Uh, Jason Grunkmeyer, assistant coach for Ball State. We spent a long time here in Miami, one of the all-time great players for the university. Yeah, he was one of the one of the best shooters in the conference when he played. Great, great shooter. Dad's a good friend, good coach. Mount Healthy High School for many, many, many years. And uh, Grunkmeyer was a good staple here in Oxford for several years. Very well liked player as well. Played from 98 to 2001, was on that Sweet 16 team that uh, Miami had back in 99. He was an assistant coach here from 2007 to 2012. And of course now his second year on staff with James Whitford. And this is Grunk's scout today. It's his responsibility to scout Miami and prepare the Ball State Cardinals for what the Red Hawks are going to throw at him. So this is a special game for Gruckmeyer after having been a standout player here. Now come as an assistant coach trying to beat your old team. Well, that's right. And uh, he talked about how tough it was going to be with these presses and everything. And, you know, that's not uh, – uh, Ball State hasn't been real comfortable against presses, and not a lot of teams have played as much as Miami is playing it today. So uh, we'll see how well uh, Ball State can do now here in the half court. Cardinals by seven. We've played five minutes here in the second half. Sellers misses the three, but Calhoun rebounds it, puts it right back up and in. Yep, great offensive rebound by Bo Calhoun, and that's what he's uh, done so well. Whistle and a foul against Ball State. It'll be shooting two will be Willie Moore. Belcaster picks up the personal. So they're calling it not a two-shot foul, but a shot before the foul, I guess, uh, Vince. So it's okay. possession yep. out of bounds, Miami. Well, for sure, the official the official put his hands up showing two fouls. That's what John Cooper's arguing about. He said, you called two. And he did. And he did. Washington. Well, John Cooper really giving an earful over there on the sideline. Cooper picked up a technical foul late in the game at Toledo on Tuesday night. It was a very tight game with about five minutes to go, and he picked up a technical. Really a key possession right here for the Cardinals. Washington loses his handle, now gets it back. Five on the shot clock. McCormick. Now Sullivan shoots the three. Missed it, and Calhoun is there for the rebound for Ball State. Yeah, nice possession there for Ball State. Turner and Kiapwe along with Calhoun, Belcaster and Sellers for Ball State. 
Sellers guarded by Sullivan. Little pick and roll, Kiapwe and Belcaster. Shot clock at five. Belcaster, the jump hook. Wow. Well done from Rocco Belcaster, yeah. his eighth point. Two back, two step throughs, another step through, and then he made the jump hook. So well done by Rocco. Got put on scholarship the second semester here, so he's earning his keep for sure. He's done a nice job this season. Nice pass from Moore, and there's a whistle and a foul. Chris Bryant was fouled. Yeah, Ball State's letting that dribble get by him a little too much here. You can see it right here, getting down inside. Three guys collapse there, and then Moore has an open, or Chris Bryant has an opportunity to, to make two. So Cooper's still talking to the official over there about the previous play a minute ago. Cooper still working it. And you know, Jerry, I got to say, I think he has a beef because when that foul was called, the official immediately put two fingers up in the air, indicating that it was a two point there or a two no, shot foul. There is no question about it. And the official knows that Cooper is right. We'll see if he gets a break here soon. Brian made the first, tries for the second, and does. Nine point ball state lead and the Red Hawks continue with some full court pressure. They want to trap the basketball and cause you to pick up the dribble. Tough to do when Xavier Turner's got it. Sellers drives the baseline, has it knocked out of bounds. Cardinals will keep it. That's what Ball State needs to do is look up the court and get an outnumbered situation because uh, Miami's really committing two or three players, four players in some cases at the ha up uh, in the backcourt. Miami in a zone defense now. Long three from Turner, missed it. Had a defender in his face, and that was McCormick. Washington drives it hard to the basket. Inside pass to Bryant, and he's fouled and will shoot two. Again, again, I think Ball State's doing a very good job right now, Vince, of uh, controlling the controlling the dribble. They're letting the offensive get way, way down in deep. You see Will Sullivan drive in deep there, and it just makes it unbelievable tough for the defenders down inside. You have to guard the dribbler and keep the guy with the ball in front of you as much as possible. Once that doesn't happen, then it, uh, the team defense really breaks down. Brian came in off the bench today for John Cooper, but he started some earlier in the season, had eight starts. Had 10 points against Dayton. Banks that free throw in. Well, the Cardinals banked in a three pointer earlier today, so maybe you give that's right. You give Bryant that banked in free throw. Yeah, he's, he's like, hey, what are you going to do? Looks like a swish in the box score tomorrow, doesn't it? <laughs> it sure does. Well, Bryant makes four consecutive free throws, and it cuts Ball State's lead to seven as McLean comes back in. He's really done a nice job for Miami today. He's got 11 points, the only Miami player in double figures. So difficult to press Xavier Turner. He's such a good ball handler. Did a nice job that time. And there's a foul on McCormick. Well, McCormick, the coaches have told him, that, hey, you got to snug up. You got to snug up out there on Sellers, although I don't think he has to that far from the basket. A little bit too close and got his hands in on Sellers' wrists. Well, and Sellers can take it off the dribble. Yep. And if you get up on him too tight and aren't prepared for that, he can get by you quickly. And that's what happened. McCormick was forced to foul him. Nice pick and roll there for House and Sellers. Franco House with the basket. Yep, great passing by the Cardinals. McKnight answers for Miami. Yeah, much too quick. 
Much too quick. You have to get your defense back and get under control. Washington, Washington's starting to cause a lot of uh, positive things happen to happen for the Miami offense. Moore comes back into the game for Miami. It's McKnight, McCormick, Washington, Moore, and McLean for the Red Hawks. Turner, Sellers, House, Kiapwe, and Kamenicki for the Cardinals. Well, you got to attack. Kiapwe, jump shot, missed it. Franco House rebounds and then throws it away. And he throws it right to Moore for the easy basket. Yeah, Ball State had a chance to make a layup and made a tough shot out of it. Some costly mistakes here for the Cardinals. And there's a foul as McLean gets into the body of Xavier Turner. <laughs> the fans don't like it, but clearly Turner was knocked to the ground. 11.32 to play in the first half. It's tight as expected. Ball State by five. Second half action at Oxford. Get your calendars out and flip past February and go to March. March 3rd, the Cardinals host Eastern Michigan. You'll see it here on the Ball State Sports Network. Of course, Ball State surprised Eastern in the first meeting this season with that nice Ball State victory. Cardinals look for the sweep. Ball State and Eastern Michigan, March 3rd. That's a 7 o'clock game here on the Ball State Sports Network. Both teams shooting lights out. 83% for the Cardinals, or for the... <laughs> Red Hawks. House leans in and scores it. Franco House with eight points. Boy, that's what you have to do. You have to make those defenses pay. McLean fouled by Kamenicki. Well, there's a couple of big bodies colliding into one another there. McLean at 6'9". And Kamenicki, 6'8", 230. Both of them feeling a little bit from that one. Uh, it looked like Kamenicki kind of went out a little bit under control, lost his balance all of a sudden. Looks like he may have tripped coming out. Nope, he just, uh, just fouled him with the knee. It's been an impressive performance from McLean today, although he misses the front end of the one and one. There, he's the only Miami player in double figures. He's got 11. Five of six from the floor. Made a three-pointer. Sellers picks up his dribble, needs some help. Kamenicki posting down. Now McLean fouls him. That's a good call. McLean was using the hands to push Kamenicki off the box. Yeah, he was. Well, you want to get I want to get in this bonus here. You got uh, Miami in the bonus now with uh, 10:45 left in the half. Five team fouls against Miami, and McLean's going to leave the game. McLean's got a couple of fouls. Goes to the sideline. John Cooper with a little teaching moment, and he's explaining to McLean, "You can't use your hands down there." And it brings Chris Bryant back in the game, who I thought really played well the first 10 minutes of the second half. Sellers, 12-footer. Out of that in-between distance, that's a tough one to knock down. McCormick misses, and Kamenicki rebounds. Almost got the hometown roll right there. Sure did. You don't see Sean Sellers miss, miss those jumpers at 12 feet very much. House, the old finger breaker right there. Fouled Franco House on the floor. Now both teams are in the in the uh, in the bonus after after this now. So <laughs> the Ball State fans booing the officials and the calls against that don't go Ball State's way. Something. Miami officials or Miami fans booing the officials on the other side. These guys can't win today. Some things never change. Nobody loves the referees except family, right? And over and back, Xavier Turner jumped. Hey, boy. Jumped from one side, landed on the other. Ca ca caught it in the air, Vince. He left and caught it in the air. He, had, he has to make, he has to have his feet set in the opposite on the, on the backcourt. 
before it's not out of, uh, over and back. Turnovers get costly at this point in the game. Ten well, minutes to play. They sure do. Can't give up possessions. And there's Turner now with a foul on Washington. Well, this game had so much rhythm to it early, Jerry, and now it's stop and go, stop and well, go. Neither team can really find a bounce. Yep, I agree, Vince. No rhythm to either team there. It's very hectic right now, very disjointed, so to speak, and neither team has been able to get any kind of uh, any kind of rhythm. And you just don't want to foul a guy like Eric Washington and he's in the bonus uh, that far from the basket. He wasn't making any effort to go to the basket. So very poor play by Isaiah Turner. Xavier Turner, excuse me. Washington makes them both. Cardinals working it up against that pressure. Turner on the bounce. Does not get it across. Another violation. Got to get it up the sideline or look diagonal against this press. Ball State trying to beat it just with a dribble with uh, Xavier Turner. and Got to get the ball across the timeline. You know, sometimes, Jerry, and I'm not sure if that was the case in that particular instance, but other players don't get themselves in the right position to provide a passing opportunity for the dribbler as Bryant gets another basket. And it's now a three-point game. Just don't like the way the Ball State's attacking the press right now. Kiapwe thought about it. Miami has not scored much off the press, but they have used it effectively to turn Ball State over as McCormick is called for another foul, trying to guard Sellers. All, all Ball State needs to do is throw, throw a diagonal pass and throw the ball up the sideline once or twice, and it'll loosen the press a great deal. Or get the ball in the middle and then throw it back opposite side. Sellers, Ball State's best free throw shooter. Missed it, front into the one and one. That was big. Yep, that doesn't happen very often. McKnight, easy deuce. It's a one point game. It's a 14 to four run. And it's over and back again against Ball State. And James Whitford is irate on the sideline. No, I think it's, I think it's a good call, Vince. I think it's exactly what happened. Ball State's ball handling and passing has gone away from them here and has really been costly. The Cardinals with 15 turnovers to just seven for Miami. Miami, 17 points off those 15 turnovers. Big factor in this game. Sullivan is fouled by Belcaster. Well, the defense is broken down. You can see the fatigue kind of sitting in a little bit. Half-court defense hasn't been as good. Uh, the tack of the press has been a little bit shaky, to say the least. So Will Sullivan goes to the free throw line. Has not scored yet today. He averages 10 a game. He's going to shoot two. Eighty-three percent free throw shooter as Franco House comes back in for Calhoun. Game is tied. You know Davis hasn't been back in for a while, uh, Vince. Yeah, I know he has three fouls on him, but. Expect Davis to get back in the game here soon, maybe. Miami in front. It's an 8-0 run for the Red Hawks to take the lead. Kiapwe in trouble. Almost thrown away again. Washington knocked it out of bounds. 
Boy, Ball State does not look good handling the pressure. And here comes Davis, just as you mentioned, Jerry. Cardinals have really struggled against the press here in the second half. Handled it pretty well in the first half, but the second half, it's been a different animal. Well, that intense pressure is just picked up for uh, Miami as they have uh, started to sense. Kamenicki can't handle it. Tough pass to handle. Bryant. Off another turnover. 10-0 run, and there's a foul against Miami. The Red Hawks on an 18-4 run. As Franco House walks down and have to shoot the one and one. Huge free throws here yes, with the momentum are. swing as Franco House steps in for the front end. Really need him to knock this down at 69% on the season. Needs to be big right here. Good to see Vince. Sullivan get up from that. Nothing malicious, but just got up in the air and lost his balance. Yeah, that free throw right there by uh, Franco was not even close. Didn't have a chance. You can see it right there, just going after the rebound. Foul called on Kamenicki. Miami is in the double bonus, so Sullivan will shoot two. This could be a four-point play right here, Vince. Very easily, and boy, I tell you, it comes at a bad time. Sullivan hit big free throws last Saturday to secure Miami's first road win. That victory at Northern Illinois. And these are pretty big free throws right here as well. Yes, Eight minutes are. to play, and Miami building on a lead. McLean comes back in. McKnight is out. Bryant is out. Moore back in for Miami. Cardinals break the pressure. House takes it in, draws the contact, and one. Big basket. Sure was. That came at a, at a great time. You have to make these free throws. Oh, good job by Ball State. Had better better control of their offense that particular trip against the press. An 18 to 4 run for Miami puts the Red Hawks in front. Keep up to date with the Ball State men's basketball program by watching the James Whitford Show on the Ball State Sports Network. James Whitford with insight to the Cardinal basketball program every week. Game highlights, statistics, analysis. It's the James Whitford Show on the Ball State Sports Network. We come out of this timeout after a little bit of a break and uh, expect Franco House to make these free throws to get this thing back to a two-point game, Vince. Good job by Franco. Got to pick this defense up now and get a couple stops here against Miami. Got him back in the half court. Keep the dribble in front of you. Not force double ups. Sullivan drives it right to the bucket. Well done. That's what a senior is supposed to do. Well, he has come alive. Four free throws, a nice strong drive to the basket, and a couple of defensive plays. Sellers for three. Big time, Sean Sellers. On defense, that gets some stops here. Got to get some stops. First basket since Sellers since early in the second half. Right on time. Sullivan shoots three. Missed it. Cardinals trying to find some offensive rhythm. Nice thing about a missed Miami shot is they're not pressing off the back of it. That's exactly right. Now here we are in the half court. Ball State's done pretty well when they've been able to run their offense here. 
Davis, step back three, big time right there from Jeremiah Davis. Boy, he has not shot the ball well the last couple of games. That was a huge shot for his confidence. Had his legs under him that time, Vince, a lot, lot better rhythm. You see a good step back here, has his legs right under him. Very good balance there on the shot. Other shots that he's taken in the game so far today, off balance. Rocco Belcaster back in. Franco House goes to the bench. Cardinals with Turner, Sellers, Calhoun, Belcaster, and Davis. It's Bryant and Washington along with Sullivan, Giovanni McKnight, and Willie Moore for Miami. Six and a half minutes to play in the game. Washington drives it right to the bucket. A dozen for Eric Washington. Averages 14. Not the kind of defense that James Whitford wants to be played. That's for sure. Can't let it happen that easy on the road. Davis drives in, but contact on the bounce. Foul going against Willie Moore. Ball stayed in the bonus, so the Cardinals will go to the free throw line and shoot two. Both teams in the double bonus for the final 6.04. Eighty-three percent on the season for Davis. Good free throw shooter. His first free throw of the day. Wouldn't be surprised to see Witt maybe uh, maybe play a little zone defense here, Vince. Change some defense up. Wouldn't be a bad idea to maybe take a look at it a possession or two to kind of get get Miami out of sync a little while. Good job there by Davis. Jeremiah Davis doing a good job of providing leadership. Two big free throws there. Five straight points for Davis. Yep, and look what's happening, Vince. Two, three, zone. Coaches think alike, don't they? Almost a little one, three, one, right? Uh, I think it'll be uh, in the, yeah, it's a two, three. Yeah, there it is. Oh, don't. McCormick. Sweet move and high off the glass yeah. for the freshman. Left his feet. Sellers left his feet and caused a little mismatch. Been impressed with the way that freshman has played today as well. Yep. Zach McCormick averages three points a game. He's doubled that today. Plenty of time. Shot clock just now at 10. Turner takes it in, draws some contact, and it's a foul on Chris Bryant. So Xavier Turner will go to the free throw line. Yeah, if you allow Turner to get in there like that, he can get his body in there just like Eric Washington can. It just does a good job here by Xavier. At the line, shooting two for Ball State, number one, Xavier Turner. Yep. First free throw of the day for Turner, 74% on the season. Ball State 7 of 11 from the free throw line this afternoon. Miami has 14 points from the strike. The Cardinals 7. Oh, huge. Missed them both. One of their best free throw shooters. Big misses for Turner. Sure is. Very rarely does he miss two in a row. Tie game. Under five minutes to play. Ball State and Miami, great rivals here in the Mid-American Conference. Both in desperate need of a win. Cardinals have dropped five in a row. Miami's lost four of the last five. Shot clock at five. Washington loses the handle on it, but he's fouled. Well, again, Xavier's got to do a better job of keeping the ball in front of him. You can't get beat that easy off the dribble. Back off a little bit. He gets too tight and allows him to get around him. And all that does is put pressure on the front line. So, again, not a, not a good defensive possession by Ball State. Boy, you just got to do a better job of guarding the basketball. Washington now four of six from the line today. As Kamenicki comes back for Ball State. 
Cardinals led by 11 in the first half, led by eight at the intermission. Scored the first five points of the second half to build that lead to 13. Washington, Washington he didn't miss free throws. But Miami with a big 18 to four run here in the second half and that has turned this game completely around from a game that Ball State seemed to be in control to now all of a sudden on the ropes a bit. Shot clock at 10, House looks inside, 12-footer, hits it. Yep. Good job, House mismatched on Washington. Good timeout by James Whitford. You know, Whitford told me this week, he said, I think Franco House is ready to break out and be a regular double-figure scorer. And that's what he has been today. He's got 13 points, and he's been an offensive threat. Yes, he has. He's done that recently for Ball State, taking it again today, another step towards an outstanding performance. Our next telecast on the Ball State Sports Network, Tuesday, March 3rd, the Cardinals hosting Eastern Michigan. It's a 7 o'clock tip, March 3rd, Ball State and Eastern from John Worthen Arena in Muncie. Coming in now, is That's our next television broadcast. Ball State's next game will be Wednesday against Buffalo, home game. Buffalo 4-3 in the back heading into today's action. Another outstanding opponent though, Vince. They're very well coached. And 4-3, uh, and three. they've had some tough games, but uh, boy, another outstanding team with some good talent coming in to Worthen. And if after this one, if Ball if Ball State, we got a long way to go here, but if Ball State could get this one on the road, then they're home for a couple of games and yeah. never know what happens. McKnight throws it away. Yep, lost his balance. Lost his balance and threw it away. Big turnover there for the Cardinals. Just the eighth turnover from Miami. It's going to the wire, folks. Don't go anywhere. 354 to play. We are tied up at Oxford. Three fifty-four to go in this one here this afternoon. Ball State in Miami knotted up at 66 apiece. And here's a look at what's ahead for the Cardinals coming up in the next couple of weeks. As mentioned, home for a couple of games next week. Buffalo and Toledo coming to Worthen Arena in Muncie. And then Cardinals go on the road to DeKalb to take on Northern Illinois. I believe you're going up for the uh, radio broadcast yep. of that one. Is yep. that right? Looking With forward. Joel Gaudet. Yep. And uh, Bowling Green on Valentine's Day. For the Miami Redhawks, they'll have Northern here at home on Wednesday. Then on the road for Kent and Eastern before coming back to play Miami or play uh, Ohio U. Boy, after that turnover, big big possession for the Cardinals here out of the timeout. See what the staff drew up and how they can execute it. Oh, there was a wide open Franco House. Sellers couldn't see him. Shot clock at 10. Turner needs some help. Jeremiah Davis misses the shot, and Miami's got it. Not a, not a real good uh, look there by the, by the Cardinals in that possession. Got to play this defense now. Miami being patient. At the three-minute mark. Game is tied, 66 apiece, and John Cooper wants a timeout. Well, both teams shooting it well today, and they got off to a hot start. Ball State was five of six from three-point range to open up the game, and the Cardinals still well above 50% from beyond the arc, and Miami is shooting it at a nice clip as well, 55% from the field here this afternoon. Ball State head coach James Whitford has granted Ball State SportsLink exclusive access to the team, including the bus, the locker room, team meetings. You see it all. Ball State SportsLink program out of the shadows. Airs locally on WIPB in Muncie and across the state on Indiana Comcast 81. Nationally, you can see it on Fox College Sports. Every episode, of course, on demand at BallStateSports.com. Out of the shadows. Some great behind the scenes work and insight to James Whitford and his program. 
Well, I look for uh, Will Sullivan or Eric Washington to get involved in this play out of the out of bound, out of the timeout. Let's see what happens here. Shot clock winding down. It's at five. Washington fade away. Nice defense from Xavier Turner. Yeah, it was. Excellent. Jeremiah Davis. And now Franco House. Turner will take it. Approaching the two and a half minute mark. Cardinals looking to get it down on the block to Franco House, and there it is, and a hold on Giovanni McKnight. No question, Ball State wanted to get the ball on the block to House, and McKnight got caught holding. Well, it's a good, uh, good look, clear out, and a good lob there by the Cardinals into House. Franco House with 14 points this afternoon. Just what you would expect this kind of a game out of these these two teams that are struggling this year. Good job, Franco. We're going to have a good defensive possession here. If you get a defensive possession here, Vince, it could mean the difference each time between a win and a loss here. Three on the way, got it, McCormick. But McCormick was hot in the first half. He was wide open that time. They, they did a good job, nobody guarded him. Big time basket for the freshman. He's got nine points today. Under two minutes to play. Miami by one. Kamenicki. Good, good look by Jeremiah Davis that time. Puts Ball State back up by one. Got to set this defense now. Miami answers. Giovanni McKnight. Way too easy, Vance. Just, you just, again, the dribbler wasn't guarded. Lob in for House, knocked away. Cardinals need a stop. Miami wants a timeout with a minute five to play. Well, an important possession, both offensively for Miami and defensively for Ball State. If you're James Whitford and the, the Cardinals, what are you expecting Miami to try to do here in their offensive set? Well, I think they're going to they're going to expect Miami to do what they've done so successfully here in the second half. Vince is try to isolate a dribbler. It could be Will Sullivan or, or Washington take it off the dribble and try to get themselves to the basket. If no one helps and they got a layup. If they help, they're kicking it out to a three, which they scored to go ahead here just a few seconds ago. So I expect them to look, look at that right away. Pepsi Family Four Pack, terrific and affordable way to catch the Cardinals at Worthen Arena this season. Pick a men's game and uh, get four general admission tickets, four hot dogs, four bags of chips, four Pepsis, four Ball State caps, all for 49 bucks. Well, here we go. Good possession by either team now. This is big. Coach Cooper takes the timeout to hopefully set something up to get production here. See the shot clock clicking down now under 15. Washington has had success getting to the basket off the bounce. Kicks it to Sullivan. Got it. Three pointer. That's what Ball State did not want to give up. That makes it a four-point game. And Turner has it blocked. And Cooper wants a timeout. Well, they did exactly what John Cooper wants. That's what they've done so successfully in the second half. Here you see it. A dribble of forces help. Right. 
Sean Sellers was off too much to help. Kind of a freshman mistake. You cannot leave a good shooter like that open in that stage of the game, but Will Sullivan, the front, the senior, that's what you expect out of him. And then Xavier Turner forced a jump shot down the other end, got it blocked. Yeah, Sullivan, 48% from three-point range. You know that guy's gonna be looking to light it up. He was scoreless in the first half, but he has come alive here in the second half. Sullivan now with nine points, all coming after intermission. And Miami now up by four, still 32 seconds to play. It's not as though this one is over, but a two possession game. Ball State's gotta take every opportunity and capitalize on it, both offensively and defensively. Well, they're going to have to figure out probably who to foul because Miami's not going to be in any hurry to score. You know, Jerry, just go back to that, that big run that Miami made here in the second half after Ball State had really stretched things out a little bit and taken an 11-point lead, 49-38. Yep. And then Miami went on an 18-4 run, and this game has been a coin toss ever since. Yep, that was a bit, that was the key, no question about that. Shot clock is off. And the Cardinals have to foul and do, and they foul Sullivan. Only an 82% free throw shooter. <laughs> Just like he made the three a while ago. He got the right guy shooting the free throw, but, but Ball State had to stop the clock. Sullivan is perfect from the line so far today. Shooting four two. four, and he'll get two of them right here. It's a two possession game either way. Well, by taking Belcaster and Kiapwe out, that would lead me to think that Ball State's not going for the three-pointer, Jerry. Yep, but because they put two non-shooters in for two shooters. Okay. And down six with 20 seconds to go, you need a three-pointer. Turner tries to draw the contact, kicks it to Davis for three. Got it, big time right there. Jeremiah Davis. Yep. Well done there by the Cardinals. Good pass out by Xavier Turner. Good. Got got up in the air and kicked it back out. And and again, uh, Jeremiah Davis had his legs earning. So you see, didn't go. And that's a key for Davis right there. So good timeout. Got a, still got a chance now. One possession game. Well, Jeremiah Davis has hit a couple of big shots after coming in you know he had not shot the ball well just one of his last 14 coming into this game but James Whitford talked about yeah he wasn't shooting it well but he's done so many other things well for them he's, he's had his assist the turnover ratio has been a positive his his attitude his leadership so many other things his defensive presence but he just hadn't shot it well and uh, even though Davis today is just two of six he has hit a couple of big three pointers and certainly that last one was big eight points five rebounds for Jeremiah Davis today. And Kamenicki fouls Eric Washington. Cardinals need Washington to miss both. 86% free throw shooter in Eric Washington. That's why he is so effective, and that's why he's such a very good player for Miami. For the Red Hawks, it's number 33, Eric Washington. Washington. Averages about seven assists a game in that play. That's tops in the conference. About 14 points a game. He's right at that, just a little above today with five, 15 points. Gets to the free throw line, and he has done that successfully tonight. Yes, he has. It's a four-point game, two possessions. Turner misses, tipped up, no good. Sullivan rebounds and a foul. This one will go to the Miami Red Hawks. Yeah. 
Well, the Ball State Cardinals once again played very, very aggressively throughout the course of the game. Had plenty of bright spots, but that one lull in the game has cost them again today. Well, it, that was a big deal, Vince, but uh, during that stretch, they quit guarding the dribbler very well. They forced a lot of defensive help, and, and Miami was able to get to the basket and get it the ball to the shooters, and their seniors came through, or the senior came through, and Will Sullivan, who's making these free throws right now, and that was a big, big turnaround in the game. Just really thought that they just didn't guard the dribble as well as they needed to in the second half. Gave Miami a lot of confidence. Well, Sullivan hits both free throws, and that'll do it. The official final score, Miami 79, Ball State 73. A tough loss for James Whitford and the Cardinals. Ball State was right there within striking distance to get one on the road here today, but it did not happen, and Miami wins again here at Millette Hall over the Ball State Cardinals. Yes. Ball State was led by Sean Sellers and Franco House with 15 points apiece. Matt Kamenicki had 10. Well, they did a lot of things statistically well, Vince, but just uh, when you're on the road, you have to do a better job of, of defending. They shot the ball well, rebounded pretty well, didn't turn it over, uh, gave up a lot of points on the turnover, but just didn't happen for them tonight. Ball State falls to 7-12 and 12 overall, 2-6 and six in the Mid-American Conference. Cardinals back in action Wednesday at home at Worthen Arena against Buffalo. 79-73 the final for Jerry Pearson. I'm Vince Welch. Miami wins over Ball State.